When it comes to music legends, Dolly Parton is just about as iconic as they get. I look totally artificial, and I like to think that I'm totally real. She's been called the Smoky Mountain Songbird, Backwoods Barbie, and the Leading Lady of Country. But her rags to rhinestones journey wasn't always easy. Dolly Parton is no stranger to heartache. Through it all, she never lost her sense of humor. The way Dolly sees it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. But I kept my husband. I got that sucker home and I beat the tar out of him. Dolly Parton become the iconic, savvy businesswoman, singer-songwriter, actress, author, and philanthropist that she is. It all began on January 19, 1946, in Locust Ridge, Tennessee. Dolly Rebecca Parton was raised in a family of 12 kids. Her father worked as a tobacco farmer, and her mother stayed home to raise the children. Dolly and her siblings grew up very poor in this rural Appalachian town. We had three rooms and a path, and we had running water when we'd run and get it. <laughs> they took baths in the river during the summer months and used a small pan of water in the winter to get clean. Dolly's whole family lived together in a two-room house. She shared a bed with three or four siblings every night. Recalling her difficult childhood, she said it was so cold in that house that they had to bundle up to go to bed. Dolly would later feature a picture of the cabin where she grew up on the cover of her 1973 album, Tennessee Mountain Time. For Dolly, hard work and tragedy began at an early age. She was the fourth oldest child in the family. Her mother would give the older siblings, like Dolly, the responsibility of taking care of the new babies that were born. She would tell them, this one's gonna be your baby. That meant waking up with a baby in the middle of the night to feed and rock them back to sleep. Sadly, Dolly's baby, her younger brother Larry, passed away when he was a newborn. Dolly was only nine years old. She said there was a lot of heartache for her when she lost her baby brother. A year later, Dolly began singing and playing the guitar on radio and Tennessee television shows. She had been exposed to Appalachian music since she was a baby. Her mother would sing old songs to Dolly and her brothers and sisters all the time while they were growing up. Dolly got started singing and performing in church before she made her way to television and radio. Dolly's uncle introduced her to the creators of a radio program and TV show called the Cass Walker Farm and Home Hour. Before long, she was a regular performer on the show. Just three years later, when Dolly was only 13 years old, she made her stage debut at the Grand Old Opry. She was introduced to the stage by Johnny Cash. Her performance was very well received. The audience wanted three encores from this 13-year-old farmer's daughter. She made her way from rural Tennessee into the hearts of country music fans all over the country. This was the first of many performances over the years on the Grand Ole Opry stage. After she graduated high school, Dolly moved to Nashville to pursue her dreams of being a country music star. But times were tough. There were days when she could only afford to eat condiments for dinner. On her podcast, Dolly Parton's America, she joked about how she used to get creative and make soup out of ketchup and mustard packets. Dolly got her big break singing on the Porter Wagoner Show in 1967. She replaced the former star on the show, Norma Jean. Norma had a deeper voice. Don't make me regret it. To compared to Dolly's more high-pitched vocal style. Dolly's first performance on the Porter Wagoner show was a disaster. The audience booed her. They wanted Norma Jean back. It took some convincing from Porter to get the audience on Dolly's side. They began doing duets together, and it was magical. Their voices blended together beautifully. The audience grew to love Dolly Parton. During this time in her life, songs were pouring out of Dolly. She wrote so many songs, she ran out of paper. Legend has it, Dolly wrote her classic song, Coat of Many Colors, on the back of Porter Wagoner's dry cleaning ticket while on the tour bus. She wrote songs on anything she could find. Eventually, she outgrew Porter and wanted to venture out on her own. Dolly had so much appreciation for Porter for helping her get her start on the country music scene, but she knew she had to leave. In true Dolly fashion, she wrote him a song to let him know she was leaving. She walked into his office and told him to sit down while she played, I Will Always Love You. That's how the famous song was born. It was a farewell love letter to Porter. Porter did not take the news well. After they split up, he said a lot of negative things about Dolly. He even sued her for $3 million, claiming she breached her contract. They settled out of court, and Dolly agreed to pay him $1 million. She didn't have that kind of money at the time, so it took her many years to pay him off. After all was said and done, Dolly forgave Porter, and they became good friends. In fact, she was one of the last people at his bedside in the days leading up to the end of his life. She shared on her podcast that she told Porter how happy she was that they got to be friends and that she would always remember and love him.
When she moved to Nashville, Dolly was focused on her career and had no intention of falling in love. But that all changed on her first day in Music City. As the story goes, Dolly met a man named Carl Dean at the Wishy Washy Laundromat in 1964. Carl was so supportive of Dolly's career aspirations, she married him two years after they met. They're still together to this day. Their marriage spans over five decades. Dean prefers solitude to the limelight. He rarely accompanies her to award shows and events, Dolly says that the secret to their lasting marriage is spending time apart. As for her career, it really took off when she left the Porter Wagoner show. 25 of Dolly's songs made the number one spot on the Billboard country music charts. She has 25 gold, platinum, and multi-platinum records from the Recording Industry Association of America. Dolly is the recipient of nine Grammy Awards, three American Music Awards, two Academy Award nominations, and seven Academy of Country Music Awards. Her website boasts that Dolly is part of an elite group of performers to receive at least one nomination from all four major annual American Entertainment Award organizations, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. Dolly received the Living Legend Award from the U.S. Library of Congress in 2004 and a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2011. Her list of awards is a mile long. And we thought I had shiners. Dolly Parton's acting debut came with the film 9 to 5. With Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda as her co-stars, she played a fed-up woman dealing with a horrible boss. She wrote a song for the film, also called 9 to 5, which helped her snag two more Grammy Awards. She was nominated for an Oscar for her role in the film as well. Not a bad way to arrive on the Hollywood scene. She went on to star in several other films, including Steel Magnolias, with Shirley MacLaine, Sally Field, and Julia Roberts. In 1983, Dolly sang a duet with Kenny Rogers called Islands in the Stream. Apparently, Kenny Rogers didn't even like the song until he sang it with Dolly. It's a good thing he changed his mind because this song has been ranked as the number one duet of all time, according to CMT's 100 Greatest Duets. Being the savvy businesswoman that she is, Dolly Parton opened her own theme park in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee in 1986. Dollywood's got everything from rides to live performances to the best of Southern food. This theme park is near the Great Smoke Mountains, which had such an impact on Dolly when she was growing up. It's hailed as one of the greatest theme parks in America. The park has received three Golden Ticket Awards for excellence in the amusement industry. Dollywood has a splash country water park, cabins, rodeos, dinner theater, and a resort and spa. It's the home of the Southern Gospel Museum and Hall of Fame, and Dollywood is the first theme park in the world with a calming room for kids with autism. The room offers a quiet retreat from the park for guests with sensory issues. Over over 3 million guests visit Dollywood each year. It employs around 4,000 people, which is very important to Dolly because she wanted to bring jobs to people who are living in poverty the way she and her family did when she was a child. Dollywood is also home to the country's largest sanctuary for bald eagles who can't be released back into the wild. It's a 30,000 square foot aviary where guests can walk by hoping to spot one of these majestic birds. And for guests who visit on Sunday, Dollywood has its own church. When asked if she's ever ridden the rides at Dollywood, Miss Parton says she never has. She said she has a tendency to get motion sickness and also she's a little bit chicken. She added that with all her hair, she's got a lot to lose on a ride, like her wig or her shoes. Hey, she doesn't like to get messed up. Dolly said she'd rather have a handsome man mess up her hair, not some ride. Dolly Parton may not love rides, but she loves books. She founded a charity in 1995 called the Imagination Library. Its aim is to foster a love for reading in children. The organization mails books to the homes of preschool kids. Dolly wanted to start this organization to honor her father, who never learned to read or write. She said her father got a kick out of people referring to her as the book lady. But it hasn't been a bed of roses all the time for Dolly. After having what she calls an affair of the heart with Burt Reynolds, Dolly struggled with severe depression. One day, she was having some pretty dark thoughts. She was on the verge of writing one final letter to her loved ones, but her dog Popeye rescued her. He ran up to her at the perfect moment. It was exactly what she needed. She began to pray, thanking God for sending Popeye to her as her spiritual messenger. All of these highs and lows have made Dolly Parton's life so fascinating. There's actually a history course named after her at the University of Tennessee. When she found out about the course, Dolly was so touched that she tweeted about it, saying, from the girl voted in high school least likely to succeed, this sure is a blessing. 
A person as famous as Dolly is bound to have some bizarre fan encounters, but this story that she told Act 2 magazine is the strangest one by far. Dolly shared about a time in the 1960s when she came home to her farm in Nashville to a box near her front gate. Inside the box was a baby. That's right, an actual human child was at her front gate. Dolly had just recorded the song Jolene, and the note accompanying the baby said that the baby's name was Jolene. The child was named after the song. The note asked Dolly to please keep the baby. Dolly immediately called child services. Dolly Parton's career has spanned several decades. She's just as popular with the younger generations as she is the older ones. Her podcast, Dolly Parton's America, was called the best podcast of 2019 by Forbes magazine. In her podcast, she shared that she's got hundreds, even thousands of songs for everyone to hear after she's gone from this world. She said there's enough music to go on forever. Dolly Parton is purposely putting songs down so that her music can live on in infamy. Just because I'm blonde, don't think I'm dumb, cause this dumb blonde. Hey, what is your favorite Dolly Parton song? Tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Taco for more.